Hello, Stitchy people. How are you today? It is Jesse with Miss Laid Pages again. Uh, this is floss tube number 17, I think. Um, it is July 9th as of filming. I'm just checking my calendar because I don't remember what day it is. <laughs> Uh, but it's July 9th as of filming and uh, I am so happy to see you all. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Happy to have you here. I love the comments that you all leave me, the questions that you ask, and uh, you know any comments that you have are really awesome. If you're brand new here, welcome. Uh, Floss Tube is where I talk about all of my cross stitchy goodness, all of the projects I'm working on, the projects I want to work on, as well as all of the nifty stuff that I buy to do all of those cross stitchy things. So um, you may have noticed uh, since I last posted a floss tube that I have posted my first knitting podcast. So if you haven't checked that out and you're interested in knitting, make sure you do that. Um, I'm going to be keeping my cross stitching and my knitting separate going forward. Um, so yeah, this will be just cross stitch, all the cross stitch. Um, so let's get right into it. So it's been about a month since I posted about progress stuff with floss tube. Um, the last video I did post was just haul, nothing but haul. <laughs> Now that I've finally caught up a little bit, uh, I should be able to cram it all into one episode for you instead of having to separate it out. Um, I'm also trying to work on making sure that I get things up a little bit more frequently for you folks. Um, I know I have some uh, some friends and regular viewers that like to check me out, so I'm trying to, to make sure that I have more stuff more often for you to look at. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So uh, first things first, what am I listening to? Well, uh, if you haven't heard, Hamilton is now out on Disney+. Plus. So they finally released a theatrical version. Um, is theatrical the right word? Um, <laughs> they released a video version. Um, it was actually originally filmed in 2016. Um, and now it is available on Disney Plus if you have that streaming service. Um, if you don't have the, the, the streaming service to be able to watch it, I highly suggest that you at least uh, check out the soundtrack online. I love the music. So um, I've been listening to that a lot, whether I want to or not, because the earworms are real, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> had a little bit of a watch party for the premiere because um, it premiered, I think, last Friday. Had a bit of a watch party with um, Heike from Stone Cold Coffee Crafts and Rachel of Rachel Ray Crafts and um, Marissa of The Crafty Heifer. Um, the four of us got together and just sort of, um, you know, stitched while we listened and it was fantastic. It was super fun. Um, and I have listened to or I've watched about half of it again since then and the, the songs are just stuck in my head. I hear them all the time. <laughs> so that's the bulk of what I've been listening to. Um, I'm still streaming and watching Netflix and Hulu and um, Amazon Prime and I'm feeling like I'm getting to the end of Netflix. I don't know if any of you all are having that issue too where I'm just watching so much that it feels like there's nothing left to watch. So I finally did watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch the revamp. Um, didn't love it. Um, I, I got a lot of really positive um, reviews. I mean, a lot of my friends were like, yeah, you have to watch this. And I wasn't I wasn't thrilled. I think part of it was. I don't know, it's um, it's a little too much. It's not at all like the sitcom um, with um, Melissa Joan Hart. Is that the right actress? Um, it's not at all like the sitcom that used to be on, but it's also too much like a sitcom, but the episodes are really long. It's very strange. It's hard to, it's hard to describe what it is I don't like about it. Um, the story was okay. Um, the acting was okay. I think part of it is I didn't jive with the lead actress. Um, she's fine. She's not my bag. Um, I really hate platinum blonde hair. <laughs> It's so really part of it, it's just unnatural. When hair looks unnatural, it bugs the crap out of me. Um, I'm one of those people where if somebody's hair in a movie isn't laying right or it's obviously a wig, it just bugs the crap out of me. So there's some of that. Um, my husband and I did watch a new series called Warrior Nun, um, which by the title would make you think it is the cheesiest, most awful thing ever, but it's actually halfway decent. Um, the actors are really interesting. Um, the characters are somewhat compelling. The story is sort of um, Da Vinci Code-esque, um, just from the standpoint of you know, the Catholic Church is involved in some things that maybe we don't know about on the surface. And, you know, and there's, um, there's demons and magic. So 
where can you go wrong really so um yeah i think i've watched a ton of other stuff um as well oh i did watch love victor which is a new series on hulu um it's been out for a little while and it is by the folks that made love simon um, and love simon is a sort of coming of age coming out story of a young um, guy who figures out or he knew i think he knows already that he's gay um, and so it's him coming to terms with that and deciding to be public with it and um, you know finding somebody to have a relationship with love victor is in a similar vein but the main character is a little more confused about who he is and where he's going and that kind of stuff so um again not fantastic but not awful um I think part of it is I'm just I'm out of that phase of my life where I really connect with characters who are still really unsure of who they are so it just doesn't hit me on quite the right level but it's decent also I should mention I know this is going on pretty long but <laughs> one thing I really um a, a documentary that I watched on Netflix that I really really loved and I really highly recommend is a documentary called Disclosure. Since we're talking about um, teens who are trying to understand who they are and that kind of stuff, um, Disclosure is a documentary about um, transgendered people and um, the history of their portrayal in media and film and sort of the misportrayal as well as um, more recent portrayals where trans people are actually getting some good representation, some real representation of who they are as human beings. Um, and it's a fantastic show for, or it's a fantastic documentary for anybody who just isn't quite sure what it means to be transgender or doesn't understand how that fits into how the media has portrayed transgendered people over the years and that kind of stuff. Um, it has a lot of transgender actors and writers in it who are telling their stories as well as discussing how portrayal and representation of them in the media helped or hindered them sort of come to terms with who they are um, and help or helped or hindered them in the world in general. So it's it's a really fantastic watch. Um, and part of the reason that I bring all of this in, um, obviously June was Pride Month. Pride is a big deal for me uh, and my family uh, for a number of reasons. Happy to talk about that offline. But, um, but Pride is a big deal for me. And also June with all of the unrest and the difficulty people were experiencing um you know has brought about a couple of stitch alongs um <clears throat> so now we'll get into the stitching um <clears throat> but has brought about a couple of stitch alongs um around the idea of representation and diversity and so i bring in those things uh, talking about um, lgbtqia plus um that's a lot of alphabet letters it means a lot of different things <laughs> Uh, but I bring all of that in in the spirit of diversity and representation. So um, I've already mentioned I'm a proponent of Black Lives Matter. It's a human issue. It's not a political issue. Um, I feel very similarly about LGBTQIA plus um, issues as well. Um, so when the representation matters stitch along and the uh, diversity and inclusion stitch along came along on Juneteenth, um, I personally wanted to make sure that not only am I including people of color um, and trying to have my cross stitches um, be more diversely representative, but I also want to um, to bring forth some some other um, folks that are maybe not getting as included um, as they should be. Um, and so that includes transgendered folks, it includes agender folks, non-binary folks, um, it includes gay, lesbian, you know, um, all of the rainbow people. So when we talk about representation, we're not talking just about uh, representing black people and indigenous people and all people of color. We're also talking about uh, people of all genders and people of all sexual orientations, um, including everybody in the discussion and in representation. Um, because as they say, you can't be what you can't see. If you don't see images of the person that you are or that you think you are, out in the world, uh, whether that's through film and media, uh, television, um, whatever, if you don't see pictures of yourself, it's hard to believe that you can be those things too. So representation is incredibly important uh, for a lot of people, a lot, a lot of different people. Uh, it's important to be able to see 
um, the things that you could be. And Disclosure talks a lot about that kind of stuff. It talks about family acceptance. It talks about, um, you know, how, how you can be in the world um, more easily if you see that others are already there. So anyway, long digression, but that's the stuff that I'm listening to. Um, on this topic of the stitch alongs, I did post on Instagram, if you follow me, a couple of patterns that I am interested in um, doing in the spirit of representation matters and diversity and inclusion. Um, I specifically wanted to find some patterns that were more than, that were larger than Black Lives Matter. Um, obviously, that's a big deal. Black lives still matter. They mattered last month. They matter today. They matter tomorrow. They matter next year. Um, it's that's never going to change. Um, but I wanted to bring more diversity and inclusion. So um, I'm going to post some pictures here. I'm actually going to scroll through my computer so I can remember what they are. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to include them um, in the screen as well so that you can see them. One of the the things that um, one of the patterns that I found that was more globally inclusive uh, was this pattern from the Happy Sloth. Um, and it is mostly text. Um, it says, science is real, black lives matter, no human is illegal, love is love, women's rights are human rights. Um, so that was much more it was a bigger picture, uh, which was something that I was that was really important to me um, for that that whole deal. Um, I am gonna once I do this, and I haven't started it yet. I was gonna I had plans to start stuff on Juneteenth because um, that was kind of the whole point is that in celebration um, of Juneteenth, um, a bunch of people were gonna do representative. Um, we're going to stitch something that was uh, more representative and more inclusion, um, including of diversity. Um, I just didn't get the chance to for a lot of reasons. I spent most of my day trying to find the patterns I wanted. <laughs> and then too, I mentioned before, I'm trying not to start a bunch of new stuff until I finish my model stitch. So anyway, so there's this happy sloth pattern that I really, really love. I am going to make some changes. Um, part of it is uh, I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme. Um, it's a little one note for me and uh, for me personally, when it comes to the love is love part, I need all the rainbow colors. I need not, I need, I need to have more than just the, the two or three or whatever that they've used there. I'm probably gonna change some of those symbols up as well um, <clears throat> because I wanna include some agender and non-binary symbolism as well. Um, and the women's rights are human rights. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave that or if I'm gonna switch that up with like trans rights or something like that. Um, but regardless, I'm gonna use that pattern as a template and I'm gonna do that um, at some point in the future for my representation and um, diversity and inclusion. And then I also posted, um, <clears throat> and I've had this pattern for a while. It's a free one that I got off of Stitching the Night Away. I'm pretty sure it's still available. I'm not exactly sure. I tried to find the link to it. Um, if I can find a specific link to it, I will put it there um, in the Link Haven. Um, but I'm not sure if I have one, um, but it's, uh, it's a Maya Angelou quote and it says, be a rainbow, um, or it's called be a rainbow. And it says, try to be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. And so part of the reason for stitching that is because Maya Angelou one is a huge inspiration, but obviously also a woman of color, um, you know, so that's part of my representation as well. And then the last pattern that I had chosen is actually a, um, a charity pattern that the witchy stitcher put out early in June I'm not sure if they're still if it's still available or if it's um, I'm assuming that they're still donating if you purchase the pattern um, but it's a black lives matter pattern um, and what I was going to do with this instead of doing just the two colors I was going to use um, the um, the gorgeous like brown to black floss that I had gotten from Kathy Davidson um, because I think that's a fantastic example of different colors and different um, ethnicities or representation of different ethnicities and that sort of thing. So um, for the the orange that would be in the Black Lives Matter pattern from the Witchy Stitcher, I would use that color instead, which I think would be gorgeous. Um, so 
Um, that's a simpler one. I might start that one first just because it'll be easier to finish. But I have those three in the works. Um, I would also urge you, uh, another thing I'm going to be doing, um, and I'll talk more about this um, soon, but another thing I'm going to be doing is changing the skin tones on some of the patterns I'm already working on. Um, and I urge you to think about this and to, um, you know, to investigate changing up some skin tones and that sort of thing, because it would be nice if there were more diversity, um, if there were more options. And, you know, because cross-stitch isn't, cross stitch doesn't have to be just one note you know it can be a lot of different things so if you follow um, Michelle G of Andy Stitchy um, she has she does color conversions all the time and she does skin skin tone conversions specifically all the time um, and it's I think it's good to have different people different um, different folks represented in your cross stitching across the board so I'll talk about that more later so that is that um, <clears throat> so before we get into the whips and talking more about that, let's talk about some Happy Meal. So, um, as you might have noticed, I'm wearing my Stiatch Alone t-shirt. So this is part of my Happy Meal. Um, <clears throat> Stiatch Alone is now officially over. Um, I'll talk more about the progress here in a second. Um, but before they finished everything up, they put some merch on sale. So this was, this was part of it. Um, <clears throat> the other part of it was this mug and I'm trying to read backwards they laughed okay let me <laughs> I was gonna try to read it backwards it's not working really... they laughed at my needlework I laughed at their stitches so it's not focusing oh there we go okay um so it's got stiatch on that side and then the mug also came with a Stiatch Loan logo. So Stiatch actually had this logo made for them specifically for Stiatch Loan. And so it's on the t-shirt, it's on the sticker. Um, so yeah, so that's some of my Happy Mail. I also got, I think this is my, is this May or June? Regardless, I got my Zenspire Designs stickers for the month. Um, she's running super behind. I still have not received the masks from Zenspire Design. It's not totally her fault. Um, Spoonflower took forever to get her the fabric. Um, apparently they are in the works now and being shipped as they finish them, I guess. Um, I follow her on Instagram, so she makes updates fairly regularly, but it is, it is taking quite a while. She had hoped to have them out by the end of June, and now it's almost 10 days into July. So someday... I'll have the mask that I ordered from Zenspire Designs. Um, but anyway, so this month's stickers. Er, er, okay. Eh. Focus. Focus. Okay, this is just not going to focus. I had hoped by using my cell phone instead of my... That's a little bit better. Let's put it over my face. Uh... Ah, there we go. Okay. So it's a cute bunny. I'm sorry about the wobbly hand. <clears throat> and then the bigger stickers. Oh, okay. Dreams don't work unless you do. Wow, look at that focus, y'all. Okay. I should have said at the beginning I'm trying a different camera setup. And this is this one's really cool. Sunflower design. It's not my favorite of hers, only because the um the line work is so small it's hard to see so okay ha 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 <laughs> so those are my zenspire stickers this month um i'm debating whether or not i'm going to keep getting the stickers i don't know what do y'all think do you like seeing them every month the stickers are cool i'm actually i have some ideas that i want to um to try to get some custom stuff done um, but I'm waiting for her to be available for customs which looks like it's not going to be until August at this point um, I had emailed uh, back in the beginning of June and um, she had said at that time that she wouldn't um, even think about custom stuff until the 20th of July but then now she's pushed that back to August so we'll see so the other nifty thing I got in the mail so I am uh, a patron for Stitch Life magazine. If you um, if you follow Bendy Stitchy, you may have heard about Stitch Life magazine. They do um, a they I think they do it every Friday for 
patrons um, a free fabric giveaway. And one Friday, I actually won. <laughs> so, uh, my happy mail is, um, that's just a card saying thank you. I got this um, nifty piece of fabric. Um, it is a 32 count Lugana, a 9 by 13 piece, so it's a nice, uh, it's a small piece. And this is called Basalt, Light Basalt Splash. So, it's polka dotted. That's super cute. I'm not sure what I'm going to use this for, but it is an even weave, which I love. You know me and my even weaves. So it's super nice. And then it also came with, and this I wasn't expecting, so this was kind of cool. It also came with um, the silky embroidery thread. So I have no idea what I will do with this. Um, it's a single ply, it looks like which might be about the equivalent of maybe two strands of DMC. Um, it's a nifty color, it's sort of a blue, not quite a teal. Um, but yeah, so I got those as, you know, a thank you gift basically um, for being a patron for Stitch Life Magazine. So that's pretty cool. So that is my happy mail. And uh, let's see. I'm feeling a bit scattered today. I don't, I mean, I feel like I organized and what I, what I wanted to talk about and stuff, but I'm just feeling kind of all over the place. So I apologize <laughs> if it's a little weird for you. Um, also, I have this new, I meant to say, I have this new camera setup, or it's not a new camera setup. I'm trying a different camera setup. Um, I haven't been happy with the quality of the videos. Oops, I'm shaking the camera. I'm sorry. I haven't been happy with the quality of the videos um, the last couple of times uh, I have well, actually, I haven't been happy with the quality of the videos since I've been using my webcam. Um, it's really great for actually doing webcam, like Zoom and stuff like that. Um, the quality is really great for that. But somehow, when I record and then um, edit it and then upload it, the quality is not the same. So um, I know I get better quality out of my cell phone. So I'm trying that. I actually cleared off a ton of pictures and stuff so I'd have space to record on my phone. <laughs> Um, so I thought I'd try that out, um, but because I'm using my phone and my, not my webcam, I have this whole different way I have to set things up. So that's part of the reason that the view is so different and all that sort of stuff. So um, also the camera is not nearly as stable as my webcam is, so I'm probably going to bump it and and shake it and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So apologies ahead of time. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get into whips. So um, I've actually worked on, I know it's been a month, so that's part of the reason I've worked on so much, but um, I actually have worked on a lot of stuff, which surprises me because I didn't, I didn't feel like I had worked on a lot of stuff. Um, I don't think I've shown you all this yet. Um, so this was one of my June starts. I mean, I've shown you this, uh, I've shown you, I haven't shown you this progress, but I have shown you this, <laughs> this actual stitch. Um, I can't remember if I've shown you the progress or not, um, but I did work on it a little bit um, at some point between June 10th and now. So I wanted to, to bring this out. This is um, Jeanette Douglas. Uh, it's a Jeanette Douglas design. It is the Be Well and Stitch Mini Bouquet. Um, this link is definitely in my link haven. So um, if I have not shown my progress recently, you will notice that um, we have some stems and we have all three flowers now. So this is really not far from being done. Actually, now that I'm talking about it, I feel like I probably have shown this, but it's okay. So anyway, uh, this is not far from being done. So I probably should actually just get to stitching on this and finish it um, so that I can have a finish. But I wanted to show that to you because I can't remember the last time I did show it. Um, so that's something I have worked on. Um, one of the bigger pieces I've worked on is my Witchy Stitcher Baba Yaga. So right after... Um, I did all the June starts. I suddenly got super into, um, I got my, um, inspiration to get back into Baba Yaga. So well, I'm just trying to move the needle minder so I can get this thread out of your face and my face, everybody's face. So this is my witchy stitchy, witchy stitcher Baba Yaga. Um, I'll put, I'll try to put a, a previous picture in here, um, of where I was last time I showed it. Um, but yeah, I got a lot done on this right after I did all my, um, uh, mania starts. So actually I said June starts, but all my mania starts. Um, 
so yeah I think last time I showed it I just had I had mostly this black area here I think I had already done the window but um, basically I did all of the roof um, or the majority of the roof since the last time you have seen this so that is Baba Yaga um, this linen uh, is just random linen I bought from Michaels <laughs> Um, so I really hated it at first, but the more I work on it, the more I think this is probably actually a really good choice, um, because it does look really rustic and sort of old, um, so I think it's working out well, um, but yeah, it's just, it's like Michael's brand or Loops and Threads brand, uh, 28 count linen, and at first I was like super unhappy with it, because it's, it's pretty low quality, but it's working out well, and, um, and I really, I really do enjoy this stitch, um. So I'll get back to that at some point. So that I did a lot of work on that. And then um, the main thing I worked on through most of June was Stiatch. So um, as you may remember from the beginning uh, or from um, my last floss tube, we had just done like one or two weeks, I think last time I showed it. And now it's finished. Look at that. So um, I'm not sure I'm super happy with um how everything looks in this dark corner over here um and i will read this for you if you can't read it so um the pattern was originally designed to have house's face here and then just say bless this house across the top well i changed it up so um and i did sort of a call back to a previous um a previous stiatch along um you may recall for the last 24 hours of cross stitch i was working on um, as for me and my house, we shall serve the giant head. Well, I sort of took that and I said, as for me and my house, <laughs> we shall serve snark. So, um, and the we shall serve is kind of difficult to see. I, I know it is. Um, so we shall serve, serve snark. Um, and then it says, um, Stiatch alone 2020 with my initials at the bottom. And, um, this border is sort of my own, it's, it's like an amalgamation of, um, part of the border that was provided and, um, my own back stitching there. So I don't know how well you could see that, but, um, definitely check out my Instagram. I have some better pictures. Uh, and if you want to see the progress of this, how I went from the first couple of weeks to this, um, that's all in my Instagram. So, um, worked on that, finished it. And, um, I, just like with the golden girls, I absolutely hated the back stitching. <laughs> the back stitching was like the bane of my existence, but it's so funny because the whole time I'm like cursing and going, how can I possibly need this weird ass little stitch? That's like a, a quarter of a half of a stitch. How can that possibly be important? And then once you get all the back stitching in there, you're like, Oh, I see now. <laughs> so it's super fiddly um but uh so worth it in the end and so once again um M has done a fantastic job translating an image into a cross stitch pattern that makes you simultaneously want to die but also so proud of yourself for having finished something so complicated um and I'm happy to report um one of my uh friends and viewers who is on my um stiatch alone or my stiatch team sips and stitches um Cal Withington she finished hers as well and I know she was struggling um, she was struggling so hard and she was, um, I think she was really intimidated um, and she didn't feel like she could do it, but she did it and she did a fantastic job. So congratulations, Cal. I'm so happy that you're on the team and I'm so happy that, that you were able to finish your stiatch, your very first stiatch. So um, I hope it helps you build your confidence. I know when I did Golden Girls, it was a huge confidence booster. So you can do anything you set your mind to, lady. You're fantastic. Love you. So. Um, let's see. And then what else did I stitch? So, um, one of my mania start, I'm dropping more magnets. One of my mania starts was, um, a pattern by Barbara Ann designs. So you'll probably recognize this. Oh, look how blue that is in this light. Wow. Um, so this is, the pattern is called the key by Barbara Ann designs. 
Um, this was a free pattern from Be Well and Stitch or designed for Be Well and Stitch. Um, I do have links to, um, to her pages in the Link Haven. And um, yeah, so uh, I had barely gotten a start on it back in May um, and I worked a lot on it as you can see. So this actually is um, maybe a quarter of the total pattern, I think. Um, because you can see I've gotten most of the dress finished. Um, we've got a lot of skirt left to do. Um, and then we've got the, the goose's head and the goose's arms and then there's some flowers and stuff in the background. So, um, got a lot of work done on this. Um, I am really, really loving working on this. It's very soothing for whatever reason. And um, I think part of it is I love this fabric so much. This fabric is super easy to stitch on. Um, this is a piece of Jobelin, I think it's 32 Jobelin from Be Stitch Me. Um, this is a color that was just available on her Friday Night Fight Night. Um, it was a random blue that she had up and, um, and I fell in love with it and it was just perfect for this design. So super happy about that. So I've done a lot of work on that. And let me get my magnet. <laughs> and put my magnet back on here. Uh, today's just going to be one of those days, y'all. <laughs> you know how sometimes you have the best of intentions and everything just kind of like gets out of hand and it's just, that's the day it's going to be. So, okay. Last but not least, I mentioned in one of my last videos that I was going to um, try to use July to focus on trying to catch up on some of my um, stitch alongs the all the various stitch alongs that I, I started at the beginning of 2020 so I actually took some time I think on the 30th of June or the 1st of July I can't remember which um, to sit down and sort of evaluate all of the whips that I have period as well as all of the whips I have that are specifically stitch alongs year-long cells and so what I discovered was that I have 16 works in progress <laughs> which is more than I have ever had in my life um, as far as cross stitch goes. I think um, when I first really got back into cross stitch, I was nervous to do more than one at a time. I was very monogamous and I was afraid that if I did not stay monogamous, I'd never finish anything. Well, I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> I'm a poly stitcher through and through at this point. So I have so many works in progress. Now, some of those are much smaller and will get uh, finished pretty quickly once I work on them, like the, the um, Be Well and Stitch mini bouquet. You know, that won't take terribly long once I actually sit down and do it. Um, some of them are larger. You know, I have, I want to say that I have six year long st stitch alongs, maybe five. Because um, I think my, my sal's total six right now, but that also includes the yoga corn sal, which is not a year long stitch along. It will probably take me till the end of the year to finish it, but it's not a year long stitch along um, like the Animal Almanac or uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales and so on. So, anyway, I have five or six stitch alongs to work on overall um the first and what i thought i would do i don't know if i'll stick to this um but what i thought i would do is um i think i have just enough year-long stitch alongs that i can work on one a week for the entirety of july to try to make some progress it's not going to be a ton of progress because it's just a week um you know and i i may or may not get a ton of stitching done that particular week but you know we'll see um just to just to put some stitches in um because you can't get finished if you never start so um so that's kind of my plan is to switch up which which uh sal i'm working on each week and uh so for the first week in july starting wednesday the first um i picked up my grim's fairy tale sal and started working on it so i worked a lot on this last week um, if you remember, and it's been a while since I, since I showed this, um, what I had finished previously, uh, was this border piece. Um, this is the frog princess. Um, this alphabet was already here, this border piece. And also, um, the, the animals of Bremen. So all of that was, was previously done. Um, so the new stuff is Hansel and Gretel here, as well as the, the old witch and her house and the tree. Get that a little bit closer for you. Let's see if you can see that. It's not focusing. Don't focus. Okay, it's a little bit better. So, um, all of Hansel and Gretel there is brand new um, since last week, and um, 
but since uh, and today is today is Thursday, so we're actually into the new week. Um, so it's time to to consider what I'm going to move on to next. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't know which sal I'll pick up next. We'll have to see how I'm feeling. Um, at the moment, I'm mostly feeling my model stitch. So I did I stitched on that a little bit yesterday, um, and I need to get some more stitches in on it today, probably. Um, so we'll see what I work on this weekend. Um, but I probably will go ahead and sit this down and move on to something else um, to try to get some in. And I, if I remember correctly, there is another 24 hours of cross stitch weekend coming up in July. I'll have to see what my work schedule is and what uh, my husband's work schedule is and see if that's going to be um, <clears throat> a weekend where I can actually dedicate it to getting 24 hours of cross stitching in. If I can, then that is going to be 24 hours of sal cross stitching. Um, I will make a plan to work on each of my stitch alongs uh, for some amount of time. If I have six, then I'll plan on doing let's see six times four is 24 right so um, if I have six different stitch alongs like I think I do if I remember the math um, then I will plan on working on each one of them for four hours during that weekend um, to try to get some more stitches in so um, and as I mentioned before um, when I was talking about the um, the representation and the diversity and inclusion stitch alongs um, one of the the things that I want to do I didn't do it obviously for Hansel and Gretel and the witch here yet um, and part of that was um, it was a lot of different reasons but part of it was I just wasn't sure how to incorporate um, some different skin tones there I didn't want there to be any kind of weird unintended consequences um, not consequences but unintended messages um, for instance if I had made the witch a person of color I you know I just didn't want to I figured I'd leave this story just like it is um, and I will start um, I'm going to start changing some skin tones on some of the other characters as we go along um, I wish that I had thought about it before I stitched um, the princess uh, the frog and the princess here because this would have been a perfect one to change up the skin tone um, <clears throat> and part of it is too changing up the skin tone means also uh, in a lot of cases changing up the hair colors as well and I just wasn't I wasn't in that frame of mind to do that work um, as I was doing this but I will do that work um, for some of the other ones because I don't need all of these characters to be white characters because um, it's a whole lot of pasty white <laughs> if, if all of the characters are white uh, for this particular stitch along so um, I'll be working on that going forward and like I said I encourage you to think about that as you're as you're doing stitches I mean um, certainly all of your cross stitching is your own um, your life is your own do what you want um, but I don't think it hurts to to think about things um, in, a, in a more global sense and to to try to put some additional representation in some of your work if if it's something that you can do um, and there is a great resource I'll have to add it to the um, to the link haven but Lord Libidan um, does a lot of different cross stitching tips and tricks and things like that and I believe uh, their site actually has um, some information on converting skin tones in your cross stitching so if I can find that I will link that in my link haven um, to help you out when you're doing color conversions and skin tone conversions so um, that is it for the whips um, so like I said that was actually a lot um, and granted it's been a month um, but even so um, that it's a lot of stitching um, I've done a ton of knitting too but that's a whole separate thing um, so yeah so that's all the whips that are fit to whip so let's talk about some haul let's talk about what I've purchased <laughs> in the last month um, and it's a surprising amount <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect that I would have quite this much um, but let's see let's talk about let's first talk about bags plus so as you may recall um, in, and I believe I talked about this in the haul video. So I had ordered some, um, bendy flips and some other, um, floss buddies from Karina directly, um, through her Etsy shop. And, uh, there were some issues with shipping. Well, um, as of filming, I had not received my original order, but Karina had shipped a new order, um, to replace the one that got lost. Well, um, just after she shipped the new order, I actually finally did receive the original order. Um, I want to say this this was 
Um, it was a few days after she told me that she had shipped a new one. Um, I can't remember, something like the 16th or 17th of June, like right before Juneteenth. Anyway, so um, I received the original package in the mail. So of course I messaged Karina and I let her know that the original mailer had finally arrived. I offered to pay for the new one because I mean, y'all, I mean, the amount of, the amount of work that goes into these and the extra trouble that she took to make new ones when the ones that I had originally ordered were lost, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. I didn't want her efforts to go unpaid. So I offered to pay for the second order because I didn't want her to be out all of that time and effort and money. Um, but she incredibly graciously told me that no, I didn't need to pay for the second order, um, that I should accept it with her compliments. So um, I have two stacks <laughs> of bendy flips and uh and floss buddies and it's fantastic so um she she's um told me to to keep the second package with her compliments and to share some of them around with uh friends and stuff so that other people could enjoy um the bendy flips and the floss buddies because her whole point in making them is to um to spread some stitchy kindness in the world so that's that's all she really wanted um and which i mean i just can't even i'm getting <laughs> I'm getting kind of for clumped here just time because it's just so incredibly kind of her. I mean, um, as a business owner myself, I know how expensive it can be to have to replace customers items if something is broken or damaged or lost in the mail. So the fact that she would do that is just so incredibly exceptional. And her customer service is just top notch to start with. Um, so for her to just let me have both packages without paying for the second one is just, oh my gosh. So I have so many, so many floss buddies to show you. And what I'm going to do, because uh, Karina was so generous, some of these I'm actually giving away in this episode, um, or as this floss tube. So as I show the ones that I will be giving away, um, I will tell you what words you should comment with in the comments. Don't use the word giveaway. Um, these are thank you gifts from Karina. Um, these are me paying her kindness forward. Um, so this is not a contest. It's not a giveaway. Um, but I'll tell you what comments to make so that I can do some random comment pickers and send some of these out to you all to share the kindness. Um, so let me see. Well, first and foremost, I had gotten, and I think I mentioned this, I had gotten a 16 pocket bendy flip. You can see I have, I already pressed this one into use. Um, I had gotten a 16 pocket um, floss buddy. Uh, this was originally meant to be for the unicorn yoga corn sal, but um, I purchased that other unicorn one that is now being used for yoga corn sal. So this Pegasus and unicorn one has been pressed into service for uh, Grimm's. So this is my Grimm's Fairy Tale Stitch Along from Clouds Factory. This is all of the flosses. This is all the regular DMC floss. And you can see it's just enough for all 16 of those colors. And then in this clear pocket, not only do I have, I've started doing this. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I've started doing this where I'm actually using, um, these are little tags that I got from the PDF download um, from Jen at um, Quirks and Stitches. She runs uh, 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. Um, so I have these little tags that I've cut out and I just put the name of the the piece and uh, the designer and the fabric and all that sort of stuff. So that helps me to tell which sal this goes with <laughs> or which project this goes with. So that's easy. And then um, this is just, these are all the um, weak style works that go with this, um, this sal. So. So yeah, so I got this one and so this is my original order. Um, this, these are the ones that I'm showing you. And I got this, which is gorgeous turquoise butterflies. And this is a, this is a bendy flip. So this is the 12 pocket. It's nice and small. And I got bluebirds which is very similar to one that I actually got from um, Michelle's live sale. This is also a bendy flip. So that's the 12, 12 pocket. And I got this cute little giraffes. So cute. So cute. Bendy flip. 
And last but not least, um, I think this was actually a free one because if you remember, um, for her second anniversary, she was she was adding bendy flips to orders. So I think this was the free one that came with my original order. Super cute. And then in the second, um, in the replacement package, um, so a couple of these are different because she had run out of the fabric, um, but a couple of them are the same because she was replacing the order that, um, that had gotten lost. So the first thing is she did not, um, in the interest of saving herself some time and effort, she didn't have a 16 pocket in this fabric. So she offered, I think this is one, two, three. Yeah, so this is a 45 pocket. Like, oh my gosh. So this is the same fabric as that 16 pocket that I just showed you. But it is 45 pockets. Upgrade. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's 45 pockets. It's really nice. Um, so that's going to be saved for like a huge project that I start at some point. Um, and the, uh, the, the bluebird fabric wasn't available. So she gave me these cute little cats. Super, super cute. And then she did have the giraffes. The giraffes are great. And she did have the blue green butterflies. So that's fantastic. And then um, the extra for this one, one, two, three, four, five. So this is, this is a 15 pocket floss buddy. So it's about the same as the 12 pockets, just a little bit bigger. Um, the nifty thing with this one is it's actually got this little um, hangy piece with a clip. So you can clip this onto a project bag or something, which is really cool. And I just love the, I like the sewing notions and everything. It's really cute. So... <clears throat> I actually have, um, I have a couple more that I'm going to do something else with, but, um, what I'm going to do now is a couple of these I'm going to offer up as, um, stitchy kindnesses to pay forward. So the little woodland creatures, if you would be interested in rehoming this, um, then please say, I love the, uh, let's see. In your comments, let's say, I love cute animals. So animals will be the keyword here. I love cute animals. Um, if you're interested in that one. And the other one I'm going to pay forward is the super cute giraffe. And so this would be, let's say, in your comments, I love the giraffes. We'll just go with giraffes. <laughs> okay so yeah these two um i'm gonna pay forward so if you would like one of these um i love cute animals i love giraffes so those two to hold them up okay so i have some um some other stuff that i want to do and actually i'll go ahead and talk about that now so um I don't know if any of you have noticed, but I'm getting really close to having 250 subscribers, which is super exciting for me. Um, the idea that, that 250 people care about what I'm doing with cross stitch is kind of awesome. So, um, but I want to do a giveaway. Um, so I thank you uh, for all those folks that keep coming back and commenting and, um, you know, kind of bolstering me and supporting me in this, uh, this weirdness that I do. Um, so I actually, and, um, I actually didn't prepare any of the things that I'm planning on including in that giveaway <laughs> for the video because, uh, um, but uh, when I get a little bit, when I actually get to 250 subscribers, um, I will, in my floss tube, I will show you the things that I'm planning on um, doing. I have a, a couple of really cool ideas, I think. Um, so I'm hoping that you will like that. And uh, we hopefully are not too far away from that. With any luck, by the time I post the next floss tube, uh, we will be at 250 and I will do that giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I will not be um, announcing that in the title or anything like that. So you'll just have to pay attention. Um, and that's the whole point is that it's for the folks that have been supporting me and continue to watch me um, and usually check me out regularly. So it's a it's a thank you for all of you um, who are sticking by me and continue to, to come in and, and watch what I'm doing. So 
I hope you will enjoy that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So now, what else have I gotten? Let's talk about some needle minders. I got some new needle minders. So there is an Etsy shop called Inconsiderate Stitch, which is kind of funny. Um, this is a shop out of the UK. And um, I started shopping them specifically because of this needle minder. So, um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, this little dog says, this is fine. <laughs> you may recognize this from a bit of a comic strip and uh, lots of folks are posting, um, the, the, their work on the cross stitch pattern these days. It's basically a dog hanging out in, um, a room that is on fire and the dog's just like, this is fine. This is cool. It's all good. Yeah, that's, uh, um, that's kind of what this, um, uh, what the world is like right now. <laughs> I also got, um, this needle minder. It says, is Mercury in retrograde? Um, so for those not in the know, I don't know how many of you follow astrology. I'm not a super huge believer, but I do, you know, kind of, I kind of subscribe to some of these things. Um, so I am a Gemini and Gemini is uh, thought to be ruled by the planet Mercury. When a planet goes into retrograde, what that means <clears throat> is that the, the aspects um, that are controlled by that planet and, uh, and also the folks who um, are primarily ruled by that planet, you know, the, the signs that are ruled by that planet, um, <clears throat> often suffer some ill effects. Um, Mercury in retrograde often um, is associated with folks having difficulty communicating, with lots of arguing, with technology not working, lots and lots of stuff. But um, particularly for those of us who are Gemini um, and the ruling and our ruling planet is Mercury, when re Mercury is in retrograde, it, it kind of Fs us all up um, and makes it really difficult to get things accomplished and really difficult to um, to uh, just function in daily life. So, <laughs> and you can take that or leave it as you'd like. Um, you know, it's not, I certainly don't blame all of my problems on a planet in retrograde. Um, but sometimes when things just won't go right, I'm like, hmm, and usually Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> um, I also got this, um, Be a Nice Human, which I just thought was really it was really cute and appropriate for these times. Um, and this last one, I'm going to put a little bit of a warning up here. So I'm going to hide the words to start with. Um, and, and then, and I'll show you in a minute cause I don't want to get reported or anything like that. So super cute rainbow, right? Okay. Now we're getting ready to, th this is for adults, no children. If you're under 13, which, or if you're 13 or under, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. Um, but, turn away now, turn it off. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and if you, um, you know, if you were, if you're the kind of person who's offended by that kind of stuff, hopefully you turned away. So yeah. Um, I got those, they got here relatively, they got here uh, pretty quickly considering they came from the UK. So I was very happy about that. Um, I forget what the deal was. I forget what even got me to go to that site other than that one uh, needle minder. There was something that, that drove me to the, to their Etsy page. I can't remember what it was, uh, but they are on Etsy. So I'll link that in the link haven for you. So you can go check them out. They have lots of different needle minders, excuse me, for all different kinds of things. Goodness. First time coughing, now I have hiccups. Um, I did get, I've gotten a few patterns, um, and I don't often show patterns here. Uh, I think the last time I showed patterns was, um, in a shop update. So a lot of times if I'm, uh, um, buying digital patterns, I don't really talk about that here. Um, I usually don't talk about it until I actually go to work on the thing. So, um, but I have, excuse me, goodness. I have acquired a few patterns. Let me have some more coffee. So this one came from, well, the designer is uh, Blackbird Designs, but this came from Be Stitch Me um, in one of my recent 
<clears throat> purchases from her. So this is called Spell of the Moon. And it's a cute little owl um, Halloween themed one. So it's super cute. Um, I also got, these are actually all Blackbird designs. I didn't realize that. Um, <clears throat> so apparently I only recently discovered Blackbird designs. <laughs> this one is called Oh Joyous Day. And I like this one a lot specifically because of these flowers. Like that was the whole reason I wanted this pattern. How gorgeous is that? How gorgeous is that? I think this I also got from, those flowers are pretty cool too, but specifically I like these. These are sort of fractor style flowers. Um, and I'm gonna have to look up what fractor actually means, um, but it seems to be a descriptor of a certain style in cross stitching. Um, and there's lots of fractor stuff that I really, really enjoy. <clears throat> so that was my specific interest in this pattern. And I think I got this from Bestitch Me as well. So this looks like it is, um, yeah, so this is a recreation from an English cross stitch. So that's their original inspiration. That's pretty cool. But yeah. And then last but not least, and this one I purchased on my own from one of my own distributors. Um, so I will especially if y'all are interested in this, I will eventually get these for um, the Etsy shop. Um, this is called Away We Ride. And it's another Halloween autumn theme pattern. And it says Away We Ride till it's dark as pitch. I'm trying to read this backwards and it's not working. <laughs> to find the home of the Wicked Witch. So... And this is another sort of fractor style pattern. Um, I really liked the birds and everything. The border's pretty cool too. <clears throat> this is one where probably when I go to stitch it, I will do a lot of color conversion because um, I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, the primitive all brown, like really kind of monotone sort of situation. I like brighter colors and stuff like that. Um, but it's really cool. I liked it, so. So those are some new patterns that I've gotten. And I've gotten so much floss, y'all. So much. So much. Um, <clears throat> let's start with um, color and cotton. So um, I believe I put a note in my last floss tube that um, color and cotton notified all of their subscribers that uh, they were not going to send a June subscription. So they they didn't charge for June. Um, they didn't try to, to send anything out in June because they were already having supply issues. And so rather than pushing June back and then having to push July back and constantly trying to play catch up, they're like, we're going to skip June. We're going to get all, everything in order so that we can send July out on time and catch up and all that sort of stuff, which is, I, I think, is a great plan. Um, <clears throat> but I did get my May... Um, color and cottons so and if you remember I get um, I get three primitives and five um, bright slash variegated so these are my primitives <clears throat> wow this one's coming out really green on camera so this one is creme brulee creme brulee rusted tin which I don't know why it's so green look at this look how green that is um, but in person this is really it's much more rusted tin and it's more brown so it's interesting that it's coming out so green um, and then nickel is this last one and then for the brights <clears throat> these are actually really similar to my colors from um, April which is interesting to me. A friend of mine also gets color and cotton, but she gets um, a lot more brights. I think she just gets the brights and she gets 10 or something like that. Um, and she got completely different colors. I was a little jealous. So these are my colors. So at first I thought they just sent me the same pack again, <laughs> but they actually are different color names. So this is Toucan. 
And this is tomato. You can really see the pink versus the orange in that one on camera. Sea foam. Which is really pretty. Robin's egg. Which is actually coming out way... Okay, when I get closer, it's a little bit truer to color. It's not quite as electric in person as it is on camera. And then this is unicorn tail, <laughs> which I think is pretty appropriate. It's really pretty. So yeah, and I love, um, I, I don't know if you all noticed, but Color and Cotton has started doing um, their floss drops a little differently now. Um, so they actually have the holes on both ends. So they have the floss on one side and you can put uh, this on a, um, a floss ring, uh, which I think is great because that's how I've started to store these. So that's super awesome. I don't have to punch the holes myself anymore. So <clears throat> that is my May drop for um, color and cotton. I wish my camera would focus on its own. I don't know why it won't. What's this button do? Okay. Um, I also um, made another purchase from Hand Eye by Rolanda. She had a couple of more, a couple of new um, limited edition silk packs. So I got one of each. And this doesn't actually say, I don't think she names these. She just calls them limited edition. But this one is like a precious metals color. Let's see. Okay. So this, these are precious metal, metal colors, which I thought was really, really cool. And all the different colors there. And then she also had this like range of pinks and reds, which I actually wished I had gotten two packs of this. When I went to buy another pack, she was sold out. So that's sad. Um, <clears throat> so neither of these are available for you, unfortunately, but they're really cool. Um, and I can't wait to find something to use those on. So that's really nifty. Also, um, as far as floss goes, uh, I don't know if you're aware yet, but Brandy at Be Stitch Me has started dyeing silks. Um, and I bought three of the five colorways that she started out with. Um, the first week that she she did them. So these are hand dyed silks. I've gotten 100 yard hanks. This color is called Autumn. It's really, really pretty. And then this color is called Evil Queen. It's gorgeous. And lastly, this color is called Earth. Very, very nice. I can't wait to actually use these. These are so gorgeous. And I may actually, um, what she's doing now is she's actually setting them up as pre-orders um, on her Facebook page. Um, when she is ready to do them, she'll put up a post uh, requesting pre-orders. So there actually is another color um, that I have purchased that should be coming soon. Um, I can't remember the name of the color, but I have purchased 100 yards of that as a pre-order. So, um, so that's something that Be Stitch Me is doing, if you were not aware. <clears throat> and I'll put those back in the bag. And then uh, last but not least, in the realm of floss, um, Kathy's re-dyes from dying for cross stitch um so last month um i purchased i didn't get her fabric of the month um it just i think it was yellow and it just wasn't it wasn't a color that i needed in my stash so i did not purchase her fabric of the month um <clears throat> but i did get a bunch of floss re-dyes so uh as you may or may not recall kathy at dying for cross stitch she does, um, she primarily sells her fabrics on Sundays, her fabrics and flosses on Sundays on her Facebook page. Um, but she has also, she's had such a um, high demand for um, her cotton flosses that she does floss re -dyes once a month as well. So she, um, she only offers her fabric of the month and the floss re -dyes on her website separate from Facebook. And she only does those for one week out of the month. So 
if I remember correctly, today is the 9th. This coming Saturday, the 11th, is when uh, Fabric of the Month and Floss Redies will go up for July. Um, so those will go up on her website, dyingforcrossstitch.com, I believe. Um, not the Facebook page, but the website. And you'll choose what you want from the Fabric of the Month and the Floss Redies and pay for it and purchase it. And she'll ship it out after she dyes it and all that sort of stuff. So it's different than her regular Sunday sales. <clears throat> which are like the me please um fight night kind of situation um she does still offer her silks that way she does still offer the original dyes for the cotton flosses that way as well as um her fabrics and stuff like that um but it is so difficult to get the the flosses um, because there are so many people clamoring for those so i usually just wait and see what she has available for redye i order on the website so much less stress and honestly I spend less money because I can pick and choose what I want instead of just grabbing whatever's available. <laughs> so this month um, and this is I'm going to show you my absolute actually no I'll wait I'll show you this this super favorite color I got three skeins of one color because I love that color so much. Um, so uh, this one is Precious Metals. I'm going to see if it stays focused. So I only got one skein of this. This is one that I, I really like this colorway, but I don't know what I will use it for. So I just got one and these are 50 yard Hanks um, that Kathy sells. I think you can get them in 10 yards as well, but I never buy just 10 yards of, of a hand dyed um, floss. <clears throat> so I'll show you all the ones that I only got 50 yards of first. Um, this is Opal. And these color colors are so subtle. It looks kind of bluey gray on camera, but there's actually super subtle pink, purple, and blue in there, like a lavender. Really nice. And this one is called Fairy. It's really cool. It's coming off like really electric blue on camera. It's not quite that blue. <laughs> In person but still very nice um let's see and i got two colors i got two skeins of two colors so this one <clears throat> is really lovely this is called iris and i almost always buy anything called iris my mother's name was iris so i'm i love the flowers i love pretty much anything named iris um it's a thing for me so i love that it goes from green to purple it's really really nice so i got two skeins of that it's 100 yards um, and also this, this is a really nice one. This is called Poe. So it's black to gray. It's really cool. Excuse me. And then last but not least, this was my favorite colorway that she did last month. This is called Tie-Dye Dreams. Tie-Dye Dreams. I'm trying to hold it so you can actually see the end. Look at that. It's really, really nice. I don't know why all the blues are like so incredibly electric on camera today. Everything else is kind of coming out true to color, but the blues are like super, super bright for whatever reason. So that's those. So those are some really nice ones. Um, I haven't been watching her Sunday posting, so I'm not really sure what's going to be available this month um when the when the postings go up on the website but i i will definitely check it out and you will see whatever i buy <laughs> so um that is all of the flosses i'm gonna go ahead and try to bag up some of these flosses picking up after filming a floss tube is such a chore <laughs> because everything just gets spread out and it's everywhere oh, and i'm really gonna have to start figuring out ways to store some of this floss y'all because I have so much of it and um part of the reason I buy it is because of the gorgeous colors so I need I need better ways to store it so as you can see behind me I have this like acrylic oops acrylic um clear drawer system but it's full already 
<laughs> I filled it as soon as I got it. So I need to buy another one. But actually, I'm thinking about once um, once I get stuff set up in the craft room, I'm thinking about setting up a pegboard system where I can hang up some of the flosses so I can see all the colors and stuff. I'm definitely one of those people where if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Um, and I get inspired by colors and stuff that I see. So the more of my supplies that I can see on a regular basis, the more inspired I'll be and the more likely I will be to pick up those things and use them um, instead of just continuing to buy more things. Not that I'll ever stop buying more things, but <laughs> there's no sense in buying them if you're not going to use them. So um, let's see. Last in the haul, um, and I should have taken all of these out of their plastic bags before I did this so I apologize for that um because it's going to be some crinkling but um last bit for the haul is um I is fabric Durr. <laughs> so let me let me quickly kind of sort through um because I have my um I actually have a fourth dyer this week or this this time um, because I did I finally have purchased some fabric from hand dyed by Rolanda so I finally have some of that to show you um, but I have my usual suspects here and I just kind of want to separate out so I can show you oh that's right I don't have four different dyers because I didn't I haven't bought any uh, fabric from Kathy in a while so I have mystic fabrics I have uh, hand dyed by Rolanda and I have bestitch me mostly bestitch me <laughs> um, so let's start with Mystic. Um, I did get a couple pieces. Um, as I mentioned, I'm no longer getting her Fabric of the Month. Um, she's currently working on dyeing her Fabric of the Month for July. Um, I'm curious to see what color she'll come up with because now she's out of that um, series that she was doing for the Elemental Dragons. So it'll be interesting. Um, but in between, she did a bunch of rainbow fabrics for Pride Month. Um, I did get my hands on a couple of small pieces. So this is an Opal Lugana, and it's sort of a sunburst kind of design. It's pretty. And this is 32 count, because that's how I roll. 32 count Lugana, or 32 count even weave is like my jam. That's, that's where, that's my sweet spot. <clears throat> so that's really pretty. And I also got, um, I didn't go hog wild partly because there were fabric limits, but also just because um, a lot of the fabrics just weren't quite, I don't know, they just weren't quite what I wanted, uh, which is, you know, not a comment on her or her dyeing or anything like that. It just, you know, sometimes you look at stuff and it doesn't drive for you and then it just is what it is. Um, so I got a piece of that oval Lugana and then this is a bigger piece. Um, this is linen. So this is actually stripey. I think part of it is when she did when she did her stripes and stuff this year she didn't do the painted stripes like she had done last year um so if you've been following me for a while i mentioned that um her rainbows last year were the reason that i even joined her facebook group um because i had seen somebody post them in another group and i was just super um, ecstatic about this rainbow fabric well it turns out that she to get the stripes the way they were last year um, and they were nice and solid and everything um, she had actually painted the dye onto the fabric this year she decided to tie dye everything um, nothing wrong with tie dye but that wasn't the effect that I had been looking for so um, I mean it's still it's still really nice um, and I will absolutely use this for something um, but that's part of the reason I wasn't as anxious to get a whole bunch of it um, as I had been previously because it's just quite wasn't quite what I had been looking for so still nice pieces still got my rainbow fabric um, I'm very likely going to be ordering some rainbow fabric from Brandy at Bestitch Me soon she actually carries a rainbow fabric on her website so um, I will probably get that on some Jobelin at some point in the future I just haven't I haven't pulled the trigger yet <clears throat> so that is my mystic fabric um that's all i have for right now um let's look at the rolanda fabric first i got two pieces i almost i basically bought rolanda out of her jobelin when she posted it <laughs> she had three pieces of um i think 32 count jobelin and i bought two of the three pieces <laughs> 
Okay, so apparently my phone decided to cut out in the middle of what I was filming and I didn't realize it until my phone decided to lock itself. Lock itself. So um, what I was saying is that I bought uh, Rolanda out of her 32 count Jobelin. <laughs> and unfortunately, when I showed you the first piece, um, the camera had already cut off. So let me, let me try again. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm almost done for today, so, um, but it's going to be interesting splicing all the pieces of the video together. So, this is the first piece of 32 Count Jobelin. Um, it's a gorgeous purple and pink colorway. It's got this really great marbling, which I don't know, yeah, you can see a little bit of that definition. It's really gorgeous. It's something that I love about her style of dyeing. I don't know exactly what her process is, but she, she gets this fantastic marbling. Um, in her pieces, which I love, love, love. Um, and it's something that Kathy Davidson um, at Dying for Cross Stitch uh, gets in some of her ice dyed pieces as well. Um, so that may be how um, Rolanda is doing hers to get that marbling. But yeah, so love, love, love. Uh, the second piece, um, I don't like quite as much as the first piece. The marbling is not as defined, um, but it's still a really, really pretty piece. Get that on the camera for you. So you can see the colorway is a little bit different. It's got some green and some glue, blue, not glue, blue. Blue in there as well. It's very pretty. Really, really like it. So this is my first foray into hand dyed by Rolanda Fabrics. I'm very excited to try these and see how they do. Um, and I'm a super huge fan of Jobelin, as you know. It's kind of, it's my bag at this point. Um, and I'm not sure why I like it so much better than uh, Lugana, but I think part of it is that the fibers are more um, distinct than on Lugana. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I love Jobelin. Love it. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> let's go through my last few fabrics I have from be stitch me so this is brandy's fabrics um she has a website as well as a facebook page she does friday night fight nights um where she puts up what fabric she has available and you comment me please on the fabric that you want um there's basically one piece of fabric per picture so whoever gets there first gets the pictures but you can, or gets the pictures gets the fabric um, but you can also purchase um custom orders uh, through her website. She has uh, a bunch of standard colors that are available all the time that you can purchase anytime you want to through her website. Her customer service is fantastic. I cannot recommend her enough. Um, and her fabrics and dyes are gorgeous. So I have, I'm now getting two fabric of the month pieces from her. I get her, um, her regular, oh no, her neutral colorway um, on <clears throat> 32 count linen. So this month it was boot camp. Oops, I'll have to pick up the card. So this is this is my neutral for this fabric of the month, which is really nice. This is actually I think is going to be the perfect color for um, <clears throat> the animal stack patterns. Um, so I will probably be I will probably use that. It's got just a hint of green in it. Um, sort of a camo kind of situation, which is probably where the boot camp name comes from. So it's a really nice colorway. Um, and I think I'm definitely going to use that for some animal stacks. So that's very nice. And then um, her, um, I get her standard fabric of the month, which is, which includes bright colorways and sometimes neutrals. Um, I get that on 32 count Jobelin. So this is in this piece this month. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so she's named this color hibiscus, um, which is the perfect name, I think, for this color. And it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. So let me get this up for you. Look. How gorgeous is that? I like how much color it has, but how I like the balance between the the sort of cream pink neutral and the uh, and the bright colors. It's really really nice. So again, this is Jobelin, super nice. Um, and this is a huge piece of fabric. I um, the tag. I'll check the tag here in a second. This is 
<clears throat> 18 by 34. Um, so that is a really nice, generous cut of fabric that is going to get me a bunch of pieces. So that'll be super awesome. This colorway is gorgeous. Um, she has some fantastic ideas for her colorways and stuff. It's just, I can't even get over it. So, um, let's see. And then I ordered um, three pieces separately from Fabric of the Month. Um, and these are all, let's see, one piece is Lugana. Actually, two pieces are Lugana. I don't think Jobelin comes in opal, so I did get a couple of opal pieces, and those are Lugana versus uh, Jobelin. <coughs> so this first piece, <coughs> I got um, to stitch my um, fox in a dress, um, which is... The pattern is called Light um, by Barbara Anna Designs, um, but it's also Fox and a Dress Sal. So I got this to stitch Fox and a Dress on. This is a really generous cut as well. She made these are huge. So 18 by 34. Um, <clears throat> so this is a nice neutral kind of color. This color is called Coffee Club, which is a nice. Um, solid brown without being too dark or too red or too um, orange or anything like that so it's really really nice I think that's going to work really well and hopefully I need to do a floss toss with this because the fox obviously is sort of orangey red um, that really nice um, vibrant um, red kind of color and I want to make sure that the fox's fur is going to pop so I think this will be I think that'll be really nice for that um, I also got and this I got um, because of the influence of a couple of friends. So uh, some of my friends, my stitchy friends, are doing, um, they're going to stitch a piece called Celtic Snow, which is a design by Northern uh, Expressions. And um, I actually am going to, I'm going to get that and put it in the shop because it comes with a dinky dye. Well, it doesn't come with it. Uh, there's a dinky dye silk pack available to go with it. Um, <clears throat> gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Well, they all decided they wanted to do Celtic Snow. Well, I'm probably not going to do that pattern, um, mostly because I just don't have time to add that stuff in right now. But the fabric that they picked out to have brandy dye for that pattern was gorgeous. And I was like, I need a piece of that. I need a piece of that. Um, because I've been wanting a really dark blue uh, for a couple of different projects. And I just felt like this was going to work really nicely. So this is a 32 count Opal Lugana. Um, and the color is called Night Sky, and it's just, it's fantastic. So, look, ooh, blue. Add some blue. Look at that, y'all. It's actually a little more denim colored in, um, in person. It's coming off a little bit more like that unicorn tapestry fabric that I got from Mystic in the camera. But it's a really nice dark blue. And I have... Um, a while back I showed a Halloween sampler that I had gotten um, as a, um, a prize from Brandy months ago. Um, I think this might be the fabric that I do that on. So it's really gorgeous. And last but not least, um, I had mentioned, I know that I talked about the Unicorn Tapestry fabric that Mystic had done. She had come up with a specific color for that pattern. Well, I wasn't quite happy with that color that she came up with. I wanted it to be more teal um, and less um, turquoise. I wanted it to be a little bit different. So I went to Brandy and said, can you come up with a color that's similar to um, the charted color or the charted fabric? Um, and so this is what Brandy came up with and I'm in love. So this is also a 32 count Opal Lugana and she's just calling this teal. How, now it's like, it's super bright on camera. It's not quite that bright in person, but this is a gorgeous color. This is very much more, this is what I had wanted. Very, very much, this is what I had wanted for Unicorn Tapestry. So I finally have my fabric for Unicorn Tapestry and I'm super happy. Um, especially because I think I got 36 count linen from <laughs> Mystic. Like why, why 36 count? Um, 
but yeah so this is this is unicorn tapestry this is what unicorn tapestry was meant to be um so i am super excited about this i'm very 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 happy with this color so um and if you i don't know that this is specifically available on her website but generally speaking um if you are trying to match a color for a specific pattern i think you could email her or contact her through her website and you know send her a picture of the pattern with the fabric color that you're trying to match um, and she can she can let you know if she can come up with that now this particular color i feel like because unicorn tapestry is so um so popular she probably can recreate this if she needed to um so yeah if you're interested in something like that contact her ask her about what her uh what her ability and policies are uh, in relation to custom dyes, um, you know, cause she's, she's super easy to work with. She's so fantastic. So anyway, so that is all the fabric y'all. That is all the haul. That is all the everything. So I think that we'll call it for today. I'm really curious to see how this video is going to turn out because I think I have like six different snippets that I have to put together. So um, it's going to be really interesting. So anyway, um, I guess I will leave it there. Definitely, you know, let me know what you all are working on. Are you working on stitch alongs? Are you participating in the uh, representation matters and diversity inclusion? Like what are, what, what's going on with y'all? Uh, you know, leave me some notes in the comments and uh, otherwise I will see you next time. And I hope you all have a great one. Keep on stitching.